constant motion. I stand before it, alone and unjust. So you've already finished talking to the crew, huh? <laughs> I thought it would take you a while longer. So, what did you think? Well, you sound confident, but don't underestimate the shield of the crux. Gotta admit, though, I like your attitude, kid. Okay, let's get started. First of all, life on the sea isn't always plain sailing. Injuries and illnesses happen all the time. But what is the single biggest danger facing crew members? Hmm? Is that your final answer? <laughs> all right, on to the second question. As you've just learned, the fleet plots its route using nautical charts. The charts used by the Crux have additional charts attached. The supplementary chart has lots of lines in various colors for added reference. What is the purpose of these lines? Okay, interesting, interesting. Now, last question. On longer voyages, we have to be especially careful to avoid certain weather hazards that pose a threat to the integrity of the ship and the lives of the crew. For example, water spouts. So my question is, how can we reliably predict water spouts so we can avoid them? Okay, those are all my questions. Do you want to know how you did? Now then? Let's see. Out of these three questions, you got a total of... two correct answers. Huh, not bad. After all, you didn't have much time to prepare. Plenty of people get through their whole training and still don't do this well. It seems that your survival know-how is now up to the standard required of qualified crew members. Time to move on. Next up, we have some Shield of the Crux recreational programs for you. You need to realize that being out at sea might be fun for the first few days while everything's new, but before too long... Looking at the same old sea every day and being so isolated from everything can really cause people to struggle mentally. That is why regular recreational activities are an absolute necessity. We offer a lot of fun courses for our newcomer training, including fishing, photography, chess... Oh, and thanks to Kazuha, these days we also offer poetry and music appreciation, as well as communal wind listening. Each newcomer has to participate in at least one, so that they've got some way of keeping themselves occupied at sea further down the line. Of course, if you'd prefer wrestling sea monsters with your bare hands, that can be arranged. <laughs> Well, for today, at least, let's stick to the training schedule drawn up by Juza. If I remember correctly, it should be photography today. Come on, I'll show you. Hmm. 
Listen up, everyone can go back and call it a day. The photography session has been postponed. What's going on here, Juza? Oh, Captain, there you are. Well, Captain, the photography teacher just sent word saying that she's fallen ill and doesn't want to risk coming in in case she keels over in class. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Oh? <laughs> Quite the multi-talented one, aren't you? In that case, why don't you help us out and lead the class today? Yeah, unfortunately, the original teacher canceled at short notice, so there's no time to schedule anything else instead. It would be great if the traveler could step in as the teacher for the day. Up to you, Traveler. Great, it's settled then. Juza, let's muster everyone over here to meet the new teacher. Yes, Captain. Okay, that's one, two, three. That should be everyone. Take it away, Traveler. Oh yeah? What's that? Fair enough. It seems like you already have someone in mind. So, who will it be? Me? <laughs> well, well, we could do that, or... Guyenstone Forest looks extraordinary today. It'd be a pity to not capture the scenery for posterity. So how about we snap Guyenstone Forest for today's class? Then there'd be no need for a model. <laughs> Come on, Captain. We talked about this. The photography class is supposed to be portrait photography. Have you forgotten? Scenery looks nice at first, but it gets boring after a while. I bet it'd keep the crew more entertained if we got them learning portrait photography so they could record moments in each other's daily lives. Those were your exact words, Captain. <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> Strange, I don't seem to remember anything about that. Well, then in that case, how about Hushing? I bet she's perfect for the camera. Or Fujong, or Mora Grubber, even little Yue. Seriously, Captain? Little Yue? You're just trying to wriggle your way out of this. This isn't like you. You are the captain, after all. Of all of us, you're the best suited to being a model. I agree. You were the one who invited the Traveler to be the teacher, so you should cooperate, Captain. 
Besides, Captain, you've never had your photo taken. It's high time you got one. You know, a heroic and striking kind of picture. We can even use it to promote the fleet during recruitment. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Well, if you say so. I'm not one to spoil the fun. <sighs> so, what do I do now, Traveler? Uh, uh, like this? <laughs> You're kidding, right? I've never had my photo taken before, but something this simple shouldn't be a challenge for me. It must be the lighting or something. You've got it wrong. And <clears throat> I never said that. You mean, go somewhere else, then bring the final photo back as teaching material? Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it, guys? Hmm. The lighting may still be a problem. But I'm open to persuasion. If you have a suitable place in mind, I can consider it. Just to be clear, I won't necessarily agree. It depends on the place you have in mind. Fishing village near Wangshu Inn? That place is deserted now, isn't it? How do you even know that place anyway? It's tiny. I don't think I've ever seen it on a single map. I'm surprised that you remember such a trivial detail. He's right, though. I did live there for a while. And now that you've mentioned it, it's... Given me the urge to go back and take a look around. Well then, let's go. We can take this opportunity to pay my old Tom a visit. Certainly seen better days. It was never that impressive, but at least back in the day, it was a lively village and home to several families. I wonder how long these last few old houses will remain standing. Nothing as dramatic as you might think. A few small incidents occurred, and then people began to leave. Come on, let's take a walk around. People used to call this place Downriver because the villagers apparently moved here from a place called Upriver. With them, they brought their knowledge of fishing, which had been passed down from generation to generation. I learned a lot from them when I was here. Now Upriver is long gone, and Downriver is all but deserted. It won't be long before no one even remembers what these places are called. Tu Zhong. Zhong? Hmm. I barely remember this name. Uh, 
You're right. I was only about five or six years old when I first arrived here. I was homeless and had to wander around the streets. I remember finally managing to find half a rice bun, but then a stray dog jumped out and snatched it away from me. <laughs> half a rice bun was not something I was willing to give up so easily at the time, so I chased it all the way to this neighborhood. Then a few fishermen saw us running and stopped me. They were kind enough to give me some food. Seeing me stop, the dog also stopped running. But straight away it keeled over and never got up again. Maybe it was too tired or maybe it had starved to death. I went over and saw that the dog still had the half rice bun in its mouth. It didn't let go even at the very end. <sighs> Poor thing. Had I known the dog was so weak, I would have let it take that half rice bun. I could tell they were wary of me at first. I was the dirty little kid who had just chased a dog to death over some scraps of food. But I got lucky. The village chief took pity on me and brought me to their home. That's how I ended up staying here. <laughs> Do you know what the name Beto means? <laughs> Come on, I'll explain along the way. About a year or two after I arrived, the village chief fell ill during the winter and passed away. During that same period, the harvest was getting worse and the fisherman's catch was getting smaller day by day. Without the village chief to handle the situation, people began blaming each other. There were even rumors that some families had been overfishing and leaving nothing for the rest of the village to catch. But in the end, they all turned on me saying that they shouldn't have ever taken me in. They said I was bad luck. They pointed to how that dog died on the first day I arrived. Next thing you know, the village chief dies, and then all the fish die out. They said I was a living curse, and the downfall of the village was all my fault. I told them that I didn't understand. I'm not a curse, I'm just Beto. Then some of the villagers started shouting, and drove me out of the village. They shouted, Nando controls life. Beto controls death. Beto controls death. Before then, all I knew about my name was that it had something to do with the stars. It wasn't until then that I realized that Beto was a constellation. And the Alcor, one of its stars, was an omen of death. Here we are. This is the old house of the village chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> is that all? And let me guess, you got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? 
Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time... I kinda dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So? Do I need to strike a pose? What? The nerve! What do you think this is? I don't want to do this whole modeling thing. Hey, cut it out. No more pictures. Inactivity serves no purpose whatsoever. So after we dropped you off in Rito, we found a shipwreck nearby. Probably belonged to Inazum and pirates. We searched the wreckage and found a map. At first, I thought it was a nautical chart. I was thinking we might discover a new sailing route if we were lucky. But after a closer look, I realized it wasn't a map of the sea at all. It was a Liyue treasure map, and no ordinary one at that. Um, nothing like that. I just mean that the map was a mess. So it was the most I could do to figure out that the treasure was probably in Lyra. As for its exact location, I have no idea. I'd say I've explored Lyra pretty extensively, but still, this one managed to beat me. So, I thought of you. 
nobody can beat you when it comes to treasure hunting on land, right? Is that right? <laughs> well then, it looks like I'm in good hands. Here's the map, see what you can make of it. So, where do you think it is? Chingsa Village. I don't see the resemblance at all. How'd you come to that conclusion? Oh, okay then. I'm definitely a rookie at this. <laughs> but your word's good enough for me. Time for a trip to Chingsa. You're coming with me, of course. I'll need you to help me zero in on the specific location once we're there. occasion. Just here to visit us old folks once again. It hasn't been all that long since we last had a visit from the Crux. But I'm glad you picked today. You're just the people I need. These two young rascals. They've been arguing with each other non-stop about some petty nonsense or other. I'm too old to get through to them. They won't listen to me. Please, talk some sense into them. Rest assured, Granny Zhuoshin. Whatever the situation is, the Traveler and I will take care of it. Oh, thank goodness. It's Captain Beto. You couldn't have come at a better time. You're the voice of reason I need in this situation. Captain, please. Help me get justice. Whoa, hey, hey, hey. What exactly is going on here? Spit it out. Tell me everything. It makes me mad just talking about it. G here? I don't know if he's got a screw loose or what his problem is. But anyway, he took it upon himself to raise, well, practically a whole army of finches, okay? And now guess what? They fly onto my land and completely destroy at least half of my crops. I asked him to pay compensation, but he refused. Now, how is that fair? Captain, I'm innocent. They're not even my finches. I, I just thought they looked kind of cute, you know? So I fed them a couple of times. They're wild birds, though. A couple times? Are you kidding me? That's rich. Really rich. There were two of them when you first started. Two finches. Now you have a whole roof full of finch nests. I swear, every time I come by your place, I think I'm at a bird market. I'm telling you, you are not gonna get away with this anymore. So... Yeah, I mean, they laid a few eggs, made a few nests, but finches gonna finch, you know. These are wild birds. I mean, they'll do whatever they please. So that's how it is. I think I got the picture. Hmm. What's your take? Yeah, 
Yeah, you have a point. Gee, let's say I'm interested in buying these finches off you. What would you say to that? Are you serious, Captain? Oh, that would be great! Honestly, with all this trouble they've been causing me lately, they've become a bit of a burden. So if you're happy to take them off my hands, that would be perfect. All right, deal. My only condition is, you have to use some of the money to compensate Wen Jing for her losses. Oh, come on. But I never raised them, did I? Well, you tell me. You took my deal, that means you admitted to being the owner, doesn't it? Otherwise, what gives you the right to sell them to me? Captain Beto's right. If you didn't raise them, what makes you think you can go taking her money for them, huh? I, uh, well... Don't worry, my offer includes plenty left over for you after deducting the compensation. This way you get something back for looking after them. Okay then, okay. I'll pay the compensation. I hope you two are very grateful indeed to Beidou. I dare say no one else will be quite so accommodating toward the people of our village. Granny Zhuoshin, as you know, many of the boys from your fine village do sterling work for the Crux. The fleet wouldn't be what it is today without them, so please think nothing of it. Ji, Wenjing. I guess you're free to go. Captain Beto! Captain Beto, you're here! Pop Shing! It's been a long time. Have you been? <sighs> Don't get me started. I've been having some real trouble with that neighbor of mine, Jen. We keep having the same argument, and it just goes nowhere. I heard you were in the village, so I rushed over to seek your help. What's the issue? Come with me. You'll see. Let's go find Jen and clear this whole thing up face to face. Captain Beto, you're here. <laughs> I heard that you and Pop Shing had a little misunderstanding. So, what's up? Tell me about it. <sighs> Jen planted a tree on his property a few years back. I had no issue with it at the time. It's just a tree, but a few years on, it's grown taller than the roof of my house! Every morning when I get up and open the window, I just want to feel the sun on my face, but I'm greeted instead by the looming shadow of my neighbor's tree! It really affects my mood! I asked Jen to cut it down so I could get some sunlight back on my property. But he said no! <sighs> it's like he's done this on purpose just to drive me crazy. Captain Beto, you gotta believe me. I didn't intend to block the sunlight, but there's nothing I can do about it now. It's not just any old tree, you see. That tree was planted there by my late father. Not long after he planted it, he passed away. 
and just before he passed, he left me with some parting words. He said our family's fortune was inauspicious and we needed something to suppress the bad luck. That's what he planted the tree for. How can I just chop it down? I'll be honest, I spent a few years studying in Liyue Harbor, so I don't actually share his superstitious beliefs. But still, that doesn't change the fact that this was my father's dying wish. Okay, I think I'm all clear on the situation. What are you thinking? Yeah, you have a point. Jen, I'm truly sorry to hear that your father passed away. But look, you can't use that as an excuse for harming other people. You really should have thought about the impact that planting that tree would have on your neighbors before you went ahead with it. However, this tree is special to you. I understand that, and it would be cruel to make you chop it down. So, how about you move the tree to somewhere where it won't block the sunlight? Somewhere else in your courtyard, or even outside it if you have to. Just as long as it stops posing a problem for Pop's Shing. Zhen, Popsching, thoughts? Uh, your idea works for me, Captain Beto. Forcing Zhen to cut it down was never my real goal. I, I just want some sunlight back. That's all I ask. <sighs> Honestly, I already considered that. It's a nice idea, but the tree's way too big. We haven't got the manpower in the village to take on a task like that. Oh, you don't need to worry about that. I'll just have my crew head down to the harbor and find you a few pairs of strong arms. Problem solved. While they're at it, I'll have them find you a gardener, too. This tree's a little overdue for a manicure. Wow, thank you so much, Captain Beto. Now that this is resolved, it'll be such a relief to be able to put it all behind me. On a separate note, I remember the Crux last visited the village not very long ago. Is there some special reason why you're back in person so soon? <laughs> Nothing all that special, just personal reasons. I'm looking for some treasure. Huh? Treasure? W wait a second. That reminds me, I saw Chong Ping and Defu arguing in the fields earlier. It, it, it sounded like they were both trying to lay claim to some treasure. I don't know if it's related to the one you're looking for, but but anyway, they're probably still there now. Really? Okay, well, you and Pop Shing can go about your business now. I'll go see what the situation is.
Huh? Beto, you're just in time. Defu is being completely unreasonable. What happened? I'm not being unreasonable, Captain. I got Chung Ping to help me plow my land because it's the busy season. And then, what do you know, he plows up a treasure chest. Way I see it, it's my land. So the treasure belongs to me, right? I think it's a pretty clear-cut case. You say that, Defu. But what you're forgetting is that I came to help you plow your fields out of the goodness of my heart. And you haven't paid me a single mora. It was also my plowing that turned up this chest. However you cut it, surely I'm entitled to at least some of the treasure. <laughs> the domestic drama just keeps coming today. What are your thoughts? Okay, I think I'm up to speed here. If you two really want to take this further, I can get a legal expert from Liyue Harbor to adjudicate. As for the costs, I'll cover them. What do you think? Uh... Neither of you seems thrilled about this course of action. Okay, so, plan B. I'll be straight with you. The reason I came here today was to look for some treasure. Chances are it's hiding right there in the chest you're both fighting over. So, how about you two stop fighting over it and do me a favor by handing it to me? Of course, I'll be indebted to both of you. If either of you ever needs anything in the future, the Crux will not hesitate to lend you our support. Captain, you're far too kind, really. Indebted? That won't be necessary. If you want this chest, you go ahead and take it. Yep, totally agree. If only I'd known you were looking for this chest. You should have said something. I would have delivered it to you personally to save you the trip. It seems like it's been quite a busy day for you, helping us settle all our little quarrels. Come on, let's go to the village. I'll rally the masses. We'll get some good food and good drink and have a good old get together. Don't worry about the chest. I'll carry it over. What a fine day today has been. Beto has solved an awful lot of problems in our village. She sure has. Without Captain Beto, that compensation payment would have bankrupted me. Yeah, and if it weren't for Captain Beto, I'd still be arguing with Pops Xing. Hear, hear! We have plenty to thank Captain Beto for, I'm sure. I propose a toast in her honor. To Captain Beto. Cheers! I couldn't ask for more than the chance to get everyone together and drink to our heart's content. Cheers! Yeah, 
that really hit the spot. Want to get some air? The view in this place is pretty good. We can take a look through the contents of that chest while we're at it. Chang Ping placed it by the water wheel. <laughs> Are you kidding? Beto can handle her liquor. Come on, come on, let's go. So, I've been thinking. Everyone seems to trust me enough to let me have the final word on their disputes. But don't you think some of my solutions can be a little stupid? You can laugh, I don't mind. Take Chung Ping and Dafu's wrangling over that chest, for instance. I had no clue who it should belong to, so I just came up with this stupid idea of taking it for myself. At least that way, neither of them would feel like it was unfair. But, I mean, I'm no Ningguang. I can't make a perfect deal every time. And I'm no Yanfei either. Not all my judgment calls are going to be 100% fair and square. I am Beto, and my strength is in trading favors. <laughs> you think I should be more selective? Some people think their favors are so valuable that they need to plan out how and when to use them to maximize the return on their investment. They view the favor as a bargaining chip. Others see doing favors as a burden, not worth anything in monetary terms and prone to getting you locked in a cycle of constantly returning the favor back and forth. But the way I see it, Favors are what keep people connected to one another. Over thousands of years, the people of Liyue have created bonds between each other by doing someone a favor here and asking for a favor there. This means that no individual is truly on their own out there. When someone falls down, there's an invisible net made of human connections, waiting to catch them and get them back on their feet. Over the years, I've come to owe favors to a great many people, and many other people have come to owe me one. These are the countless bonds between us, like so many fish in the sea. And they're the reason that the Crux and I have survived the countless hardships we faced. I believe that if there ever comes a day when the world is overrun by monsters, Liyue's legal system collapses and the land is thrust back into an age of war, it's these bonds that will see us all through the dark days ahead, until we come out on the other side. I'm not saying that. But either way, we have a pretty firm bond between us already, don't you think? <laughs> Was this wind brewed in a winery? It's making me lightheaded. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Something we were literally just talking about. Oh, yeah, the chest! <laughs> oh, I got so immersed in our conversation that I forgot all about the main event. Come on, let's open it up and see what's inside. That's it? A whole lot of nothing? <laughs> it's 
not exactly what I was looking for. But you know what? I don't care. The fun part was going on a treasure hunt with you. Come on, let's get back to the party. Tonight, we go big before we go home. Thank you. 